Hello, my name is Shelby Vaughn, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to invite you to tune in and listen to my broadcast, Flames of Revival, on Faith Television Network. You will be blessed. Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Bonner. So glad you tuned in. I'm still on this message about Revelation. Now, I made this statement last time, and I want to get back on it again, all right? And, and I'm, I'm going to start because I ended with saying that you could walk in the supernatural. You understand? That God can use you to lay hands on the sick and to cast out devils. God can use you to walk in the prophetic. God can use any believer who decides to trust God and to pay attention to the Spirit of God. Remember, he's your teacher. He's the guide. He's the Spirit of truth. The Bible says he will guide you into all truth, okay? Because I talk to people all the time, you know, and then they think that, you know, they think, man, you know, and I, because I don't try to act deep. I don't try to act nothing. I just act me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and they... They, they, they don't, because if you hadn't done something, you don't know how to do it. That's first. Secondly, God uses everybody how he used them. So you might not never do what I do like I do. That ain't got, that don't mean nothing. Who am I? You understand? But God can use you. First of all, I want you to just believe that God can use you. You got to believe that. All right. So when you read your Bible, go to the New Testament and start reading about how God used people and, and start doing this. I could do that. That's me. I could do that. That's me. You know what? I could do that. That's me. In the Old Testament, that was time when they said, you know, King, uh, that prophet over there, what you're saying in your bedchamber, God, I mean, what you're saying over here, God telling him in his house, in his bedchamber. And I've had that happen too. Do you understand? So God can reveal what you need to know. You understand? Okay. And so, so, so the first way is you got to want it. Now, now, so, so let me just, let me come out of this a little bit and I'll come back. See, there's always laws that govern things. Okay. There's natural laws that govern the earth. There's gravity. That's laws that govern your body. You got to drink some water. You got to eat. You got to sleep. I don't care how tough you are. I don't want to miss nothing. No, your sleep is good for your life. And you're going to sleep <laughs> whether you want to or not. You're going to sleep. You're going to drink some water. Do you understand? It's just the nature of the world we live in. You're going to use the restroom in case you think you're not. Y'all getting what I'm saying? So, so you're going to be a normal human like everybody else. So that's the first thing I want to say. You're not going to be a superstar and super whatever and all that. Forget all of that because that's not the way it works. Okay, so that's first. Okay. Number two. But well, let me not number. Then you ought to, you ought to spend time uh, meditating on the word, you know. You don't have to get on your knees every time you pray. You can be riding on the road and just whisper a prayer. God, you know, I need you some help today, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Bam. How long that took? Three seconds? Four seconds? That's it. Forget all this. See, see here's the deal. People try to act religious and all that because they're trying to earn a gift. They, they try to earn uh, a place in the body. No, you don't have to do that. Your gift will make room for you. If God wants you in front of a crowd, he'll get you there. If he don't, you got not getting there, and who cares? You understand what I'm saying? Who cares? But what'll happen is you'll start knowing what you know, and you won't be able to deny what you know, and you won't be able to deny what you see. You got it? And then the more you do it, the more confidence that you'll have. But anyway, in God and in what he's telling you. So, so uh, why don't you believe God for something small? Okay, God, you know, you can stop. And, and let's say you're you, you just learning how to do this. you just learning how to do this. And let's say you come to church and you're sitting here. And uh, all of a sudden, you sit there and you hear this voice say, you left your door unlocked. You ready for church? And you sitting there and it's like, huh? You left your door unlocked. 
Hmm. And you sit there, and then you can't get away from it. You know, you left your door unlocked. You know you left your door unlocked. And then you, you say, come on, let me go see. You get up, you go out there, and sure enough, your door is unlocked. That's God teaching you his voice. See, people got God all mixed up. They think God don't care about little bitty stuff. To God, everything is little bitty stuff. The Red Sea is little bitty stuff. Quails for one or two miles in every direction is little bitty stuff. Water coming over the ground and going in a hole. Is little, a donkey talking. The Red Sea opening up. All that is little bitty stuff to God. So it ain't no, whoo, God. Uh -uh. That's you. That's your mindset. Okay. And so, and so, let's say uh, you want to know something, but you don't know it. So you say, well, Lord, you know, I'm trying to, you know, Lord, I'm studying this, or I'm praying for that, or whatever. And, uh, Lord, I, I, wish, I, I wish I knew how this worked, or how this gift worked, or whatever. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to show me, or uh, let me hear some teaching on a training or whatever, so I'll know how this works. You understand? And then the pastor starts teaching about it, or you'll be on radio or YouTube, whatever you do, or whatever, or you'll, be, you'll hear a conversation in the grocery store, or whatever. You understand? Okay. And then, so you start to act and move, and then you'll get, you'll start to know whether it's God or not. And then you, and I ain't talking about being spooky, but the only way you learn this is learning. Can't nobody just teach you and, and save you from mistakes, because mistakes prove you trying, and you will get better at it. And so you say, well, I was sitting up there minding my own business, and this voice told me to go to the Holiday Inn in the lobby. And I ain't got no cousins coming in. I don't know nobody at the Holiday Inn. I don't know why I'm there. But I'm going to go stand there at the Holiday Inn, and God is going to tell me, or he, gonna, or he told me a woman going to come through, and she's going to need some help, and to help her, and to tell her that he loves her, and whatever, and walk off, or whatever. You understand? So you get in your car, it's like, man, this is crazy. Especially if you can't get rid of it. Especially if it just keep on talking to you. And so you say, okay, <clears throat> I'm going over here. So you get up, you go, and then you, you sure enough, you're standing there and you're thinking, oh, okay, I haven't been here long enough, I'm about to go. And then when you get ready to leave, all of a sudden, ma'am, excuse me, can I talk to you? And I'll say, yeah. And then, and then you hear a voice say, she's the one. Okay? And then you say, okay, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you fired up. Because you heard God, and then you did what he said, then you went on back to the house. See, he's telling you, he's telling you, uh, he's teaching you how to hear his voice. Do you understand? There's times when, there, when I'm, I'm at certain stores I go to and all that, and God will say, I say, boy, you know, and God already know what I like, the different kind of um, uh, health drinks and whatever. And so I remember one time I'm going in another direction, and God said, well, you're going to pass by there. Stop over there. And uh, those drinks that you like, that's 3 or $4, they're going to be on sale for a dollar. What? Not them. Them. Okay. Put, look, I had no intention of going over there. Went in there. Went straight to the back. The, the, those health drinks that I like was on sale. They normally cost three fifty six or whatever it is. And uh, they were a dollar. For real. And I bought probably 15 of them. I, guess. I don't know. But I bought a few. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I bought a few. Okay, now see, to somebody who don't know nothing, I, well, I ain't talking to you. I ain't talking to you. So I'm talking to somebody uh, who's young in the faith or, or who, want, who, who got everything else working, but they don't know how to walk in this and walk in the supernatural. Or they believe they're called to know and to see and to be a seer and to understand, but nobody's ever talked to them. And they, you might have been afraid to ask somebody, so you tune in to me, and I'm just teaching on it, and I'm just telling you that that's the way it works. You understand? And so, and then, and then what you do, sometimes you just get quiet and you listen. Say early in the morning before you start your day, okay, Lord, what you want me to do today? Well, I want you to do this, so and so and so. Okay, Lord, and so uh, what can I expect? Uh, should I be looking for something? And then he don't say nothing. And then you say, well, Lord, I would like this to happen, and I would like this to happen, and I would like this to happen. And that's what I would like, you know, so that's it. God said, okay. And then that's the end of that. And then you leave, and that's the end of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's the end of that. 
and then you wait, and then you see. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, man, it's a one, and, and then you get to the point to where so many good things happening, and you want to learn it, and you don't want to mess it up. So you won't even tell a whole lot of people about a whole lot of stuff that's going on, because they're going to look at you crazy, or you go bragging or whatever. So you don't, you don't want to uh, do a whole lot of talking with those people in your life to them. Spell it. If somebody going to make fun, don't catch the pearl before the swine and all of that. So don't do that. Okay, now. Now, let me say something else. Uh, when it comes to the spirit of God, um, let me see, your spirit has a voice. You know, and I know you hear me talking in this voice. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about there are times when you will have a thought and it seems like it's talking in your voice. And sometimes they'll be in another voice. But my point is that you'll start right and say, what? Or this impression come, just an impression. You didn't think that, it's just an impression. You didn't, you didn't feel nothing, you didn't see nothing, you didn't feel no wind or nothing, but you just had this impression. I just think I need to start studying James, the book of James. Or I think I need to start so and so. Or God has said, I'm going to give you $2,000 today. I know somebody holler, give it to me, Lord. I'm with you, give it to him, Lord. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying? And God will start to show you. Then all of a sudden, you're in expectation. You start looking for it. <coughs> you understand? <coughs> and, and so, when you start reading the scriptures about uh, what happened and uh, the miracles in the Bible, I want you to start thinking, I know how this is going to sound, and you're still going to be in faith, but I want you to start uh, thinking practical and natural is hearing God because God is obligated to make you understand what he's talking about so it ain't got to be deep this big booming voice come out of the heavens lightning flash knock you down and then you hear God <laughs> or angel come wake you up and look at you and tell you I mean he could do that but but I want you to think practically see most people uh, let's see I want to do this uh, most people base their decisions on how they see themselves. Oh, I'm not qualified to walk in the prophetic. Who said that? Ain't nobody qualified. I'm not qualified to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. Who said that? I was wanting to speak in tongues and interpret. Okay. The Bible says desire earnestly the best gift. See, you understand? So let the word tell you what's possible. Let, let the Word of God tell you. But what I started talking about when I was talking about practically and all, I want you to, because see, what happens in the, in the spirit will happen in the natural. That's what I want you to understand. There's always something happening in both arenas. Okay, so let me show what I mean. So the devil who wants to bring you a temptation or whatever, a certain area, whatever, the Bible says he's the God of this world. So it didn't come from you. It came from somewhere else to you. All right? God wants you to build a church down on the corner. Well, it didn't come from you. It came from somewhere else. Do you understand? So I want you to understand that. And if you miss, look, don't be afraid to fail when it comes to spiritual walk, walking and all. Let me show you something. If you go and you think, look, the Lord showed me that you got a strained elbow or you got a whatever. And, and let's say you, you, you want to walk in, in that gifting and you, you desire it. Oh, God already told you that's what you're going to do. And you go over there and you pray for somebody. Or you go over there and say, the Lord is showing me that you got this. And they say, no, I don't. And you say, ooh, Lord. They say, okay. Well, look, just say okay. Sometime, ask, ask them, well, if the Lord leads you, you want, well, can I pray anyway? Well, you can pray if you want to, but I ain't got it. Okay, well, let me pray. Got it? And then leave. <coughs> and then don't let the devil be talking about, you're a false prophet. You're, a false prophet is somebody who knows the truth, who tries to twist stuff up and say to people to get them confused on purpose. You trying to learn to walk in the supernatural don't make you no false prophet because you missed it. So that's two different things here. A false prophet is deceiving on purpose. You're not trying to deceive nobody on purpose. you walking and trying to learn how to flow. So we're talking two different things, and don't you condemn yourself, and don't you, you know, if you tried and it didn't work out, don't condemn you. You don't have to do that. 
You understand? God didn't come to condemn you anyway. He want to instruct you. He want to help. He want to convict you and say, okay, well, you didn't do that one right, but let me show you what was right. And sometimes people will lie. That's what I'm getting at. People will lie. They'll have it and they'll swear up and down that they ain't got it. Do you understand? I've had some, more than one. You know, and, 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 and they're not, listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes you know stuff they don't know. So there's some people you can tell them they got something, they don't even know they got it. There are some people you can tell stuff, they know they got it, but they don't want you to be right. There are some people just don't want you to be right, period. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are some people that just don't want you to be right. He black. That's Shelby. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. They just don't want you to be right. But if you're right, you just right, and it's all right. Okay? You understand? All right. So, 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 and, and this is how you start flowing. Now, ask permission. Don't go over there, the Lord said, and all that. Don't do that. Just ask them. You mind if I pray for you? Well, no, nah, I don't want you to pray. Okay. All right. You know, but don't just start doing stuff. Can I put my hand on your shoulder? Can I touch your shoulder or whatever? They don't want you to touch them. Don't touch them. It ain't no big deal. It's no, I know you've seen all kind of stuff in revival meetings and all of that and all of that and all of that. And that, it don't matter. If you learning, you learning. If they doing that, maybe God told them to do that. But if God didn't tell you to do that, copycatting somebody is not going to make the supernatural show up. It's your moving in confidence and knowing that God wants to help you. So let's say, okay, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. All right, now, so this is what I want. The Bible says, ask what I will, and it shall be done. Okay? So I want to use my faith, and I want to be rich. I want to use my faith, and I want to retire in three months or six months, and I want to go in this kind of business or whatever, whatever. So first thing you do is pray about it. See if that's going to go along with your purpose. Because anything that's going to go against your purpose, God can't back you up. God is purpose-driven. So that's first. You need to sell that first. What is the calling on your life? What are you supposed to be doing? So that's first. Because what will happen is that's what you'll be good at, that's what you'll love, and that desire will just be in you to do that. Some people are supposed to minister to people in the rest home until they die. That's their ministry. God told them that's their ministry. God showed them that's their ministry. And every Saturday, you see them going with their handkerchiefs, and they all in their Bible, and that's their ministry. They're obeying God. Some people go to the park. And they walk around and they try to find somebody to witness to because that's the ministry God got them in. Somebody else will go to the jailhouse and that's what they do every week because that's their ministry. Every ministry ain't in the poor pit. The ministry that you need to walk in is the one that God told you to walk in because that's the one he's going to bless you in. Okay? So don't think all this stuff is elaborate and all of that and all that. You understand? Now, when you get started, the enemy is going to attack. Number one, he's going to make you think you're crazy. Number two, he's going to tell you stuff that you know you're not. So, example, if the devil comes to you and say, oh, you're just jealous because you saw them do it and you want to do it to prove a point. If you know you're not jealous and you know you're not doing nothing to try to prove, prove no point and all that mess, the devil is a liar. Resist him. He got to flee because he don't want you to try at all. See, the devil want us to be contained. He don't want the people to know, man, this is, this is a real God out here. No, for real. For real, for real. You know what I mean? <coughs> and God wants you to win every day. You understand my point? God wants you to win. God wants you to walk in his way. And God wants manifestations to show up so the people can know they're the real God. For real. I've had people stand up. Some knew that they had something and they said they didn't, but some didn't know. They just didn't know. And I wouldn't back off, especially when God told me 100%. And, uh, and I, you know, I'll mention a few. But uh, one lady came from here, came from Beaumont, and her and her husband. She might be watching right now, but she know what I'm talking about. And uh, I said, I want to pray for this and that. She said, I don't have that. I said, okay, but well, can I pray for you anyway? And uh, she said, yeah, you can, but I don't have it. But, y'all, if you want to pray, you can pray. And she was real respectful, real nice. I said, okay. I said, when last time you been to the doctor? She said, I, okay, I just went last week. I said, okay, well, you got your report back? She said, not yet. I said, okay. So I prayed for her. And she said, thank you. And I shook their hand and they left. And then she wrote back later on, said that, that 
you know, she went to the doctor and what I said, the way I described it, exactly what she had. And then she thought, yeah, but if he told me that, then if he prayed for it, then it left. So that means it ain't here. And then it's gone. And then she wrote me a letter because she could have just hid it and said, you know, and let me think I was wrong. But she didn't do that. She wrote me and she told me. Okay. You understand? There's people right here. And in other places, I prophesied to, told them what's going to happen. Oh, that ain't going to happen. Okay. No, that ain't going to be like that. Okay. No, I don't want that to happen. Okay. Well, I don't want to, you know. Okay. All right. Ain't nothing. I don't care. You understand? Because I want the best for everybody. I ain't mad at nobody. You understand? Tell you what, when you start walking in this level like this, you're going to be humble. And uh, you ain't going to be mad at nobody. And you're not going to hope. Nobody have a hard time and, you know, and all of that. And they lose their job, lose their car and all of that. And if you got the right heart, you ain't going to be mad if you prophesy to them and they tell you to get away from them. I don't want you to prophesy to me. Get away from me. No, no, no. You ain't going to be mad at them. Not at all. Okay, well, God bless you. And you just move on. You understand? Tell you what, this will not work if you walk offended. If you are under stress and strife, and easily offended, you can't walk in this. You got to be able to take something. You got to be able to know how to speak and when not to speak and how to speak up. Because, see, here's the deal. This is what I know, if I don't know nothing else. When I know 100% that God showed me something and the personnel, you know, popping off at the mouth and all that and, uh, and all that, I don't, I, that don't mean nothing to me because I know what God told me going to happen. Unless, I mean, you understand. I mean, and sometimes God tells you to tell people something, they can pray and get it off of them. I, I know that. You understand? And pray and, and, and cause it to turn around. Yay, I don't want nothing to happen to you. I'm on your side. But if you don't do nothing about it, what I say is going to happen to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I heard a lady's testimony, and she was saying that she tried to help her son. I forgot how old he was or whatever. Uh, her brother, years ago. And she was telling them, listen, I, I was praying, fasting and praying, and you weren't supposed to go down there and, 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 and you know, because something's going to try to kill you. You need to stay away from there. You don't, I don't want you to do that. And so he ignored her, and he, she got killed. And she was telling them, she said, you know, he just played it off. Like, yeah, well, mm-hmm, whatever. Just played it off. And, uh, and that's her, her real blood. Her blood. And she the one telling it. You understand? Eh? And she telling it on the radio. And so she was saying and so she was telling the, the other guy, the preacher, she said, so everybody got a choice. And no matter what we want or what we think, you can't go over nobody's choice. You, you, you can't choose for other people. You can choose for you. And so no matter how bad I wanted him not to go with them people and not to go in that drug deal and all of that, it didn't, it didn't matter how bad I didn't want him to go, he went and he got killed. You know, and that's what happened. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, and so, um, what 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 spiritual warfare is? It's 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 a warfare in the spirit arena. It's where God is trying to get something to you, a message, and and the devil is trying to block it, so you won't win that conflict. Everybody knows the story about Daniel, right? Yeah. Daniel's trying to pray, wasn't getting an answer from God. And Daniel, you know, I ain't going to eat no pleasant bread. Y'all you know, know the story. And then when the angel finally did break through and come, this is what he said. He said, Daniel, 21 days ago, he had to speak in his time because there ain't no time in heaven. 21 days ago, God heard your prayer. And I was sent to answer 21 days ago. But the prince of Persia withstood me. There was no prince of Persia. That's first. And if you think it natural, a man, <laughs> God sent an angel to a man and another man stand up and tell an angel you can't get to him. You kidding me? So, so you have to understand talk, spiritual talk, you know. And so, but, and so, and, and you have to understand, you say, well, seem like, you know, the, that angel, how, how was he so, why, how could he hold him up for 21 days? I mean, that's an angel of God. Well, the other guy used to be an angel of God too. You understand? They strength didn't leave. You know, they doom and loss and all of that. You know, the demons and the devil and all, but they still got strength too. <laughs> See, people don't think like that. You know, God didn't take strength back and all of that. He kicked them out. 
but they're going to burn and it's going to be over with and they ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. Do you understand? And, and then two, Daniel had to stand. Daniel had to learn how to stand. You understand? Daniel had to learn how to stand for his own faith to work. And so, and that's a good point there. The devil hindered answered prayer because the prayer was already answered. He was on the way. So the prayer was answered. But the devil hindered it from getting to Daniel until 21 days later. So that ought to give you strength to stand when you stand and believe in God for your car or for a situation to turn around or for your raise or for promotion or for whatever. That ought to give you strength to stand and praise God and give him glory and just stand. You understand? And don't talk doubt and don't talk fear and don't talk unbelief and don't talk like it ain't going to happen. <laughs> you understand? See, I can't use my faith for you. And you can't use your faith for me. You can with, with me, but not for me as such. You, know, you understand what I'm saying. And I want you to understand, the laws of God work. Y'all know what I say all the time, this is supposed to work. And it does. The laws of God work if you work them. And you have to learn how to work with the Spirit of God so he could teach you how to work his laws. Because he's the Spirit of truth. He knows what'll work and he knows what won't work. So if you cultivate a listening ear, a listening heart for the spirit to direct you and help you and order your steps, then he will. You understand? And so as long as I desire to be close to God and I want to give him the glory, can't take none of his glory. You understand? No, you can't take no glory from God. Everybody know you didn't do that. God did it. And you give him glory and you give him praise and you stay humble before the living God. He will bless you all the days of your life. He really will. You understand what I'm saying? And so uh, you need to keep on in your pursuit of God. Just keep going. You can't go wrong. You can't lose. You'll win. But you have to learn. And can't nobody teach you but so many things. And then the rest of it is on you. Okay? So thank you for tuning in. Come back again. This is Shelby Varner from Anahuac, Texas. Remember, you got what it takes. Yes, sir. It takes what you've got to change the world. God bless you. See you again. Bye. Welcome to Flames of Revival Broadcast. This is Shelby Varner. I'm Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to give you a personal invitation. Uh, if you're ever in the Anahuac area, you need to come visit. We have our regular service at uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, on Wednesday is our Bible study night at 7 o'clock. All right? And uh, we pray for the sick. If that's what you need, come on. You are welcome. This is my personal invitation to you. Also, you can tune in the Faith Television Network. I'm on at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night and uh, I think I can teach you some things. The name of the broadcast is Flames of Revival and I'll be looking to see you there.